Hello. In this example, I'm going to give you a method you can use to measure the thickness of metals. OK, so now that we, we've covered a lot of the basic techniques that we need to build a lot of these layers, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go over every little detail of how I build the model, um, but I will at least explain to you what the components are. And I'm going to show you a little bit about this uh, this technique for measuring the thickness of a metal. Now there are a few different ways that you can do this, but I find that this uh, this technique is is pretty much the most accessible and and requires the least uh, hardware reconfiguration. So basically, what we have is a, a material system where we have something like silicon or another uh, you know well modeled substrate, and then a transparent material. In this case, it's thermally grown SiO two. Uh, and that's an easy one to use because you can just oxidize a silicon wafer and get a very uh, uniform homogeneous uh, film across it that's very smooth. Uh, and then you would deposit a thin layer of the metal on top. Now, when I say thin, uh, I I'm saying something that's you know thin enough to absorb some uh, of the light that passes through it, but certainly not thin enough to absorb um, enough to stop multiple reflections. So you want the light to go through the metal and then through the dielectric beneath it and then bounce off the substrate and then go back through the metal and then come out, but also reflect off of the metal, go back down through the sub through the dielectric and to give you, you know, to give you multiple orders of reflection. So what that will do is it will give us basically the type of uh, results we get from a dielectric but it will sort of dampen the result. Uh, now, so now I have a map scan of this. I've got a, a bunch of different points that I've scanned. And uh, we'll just go back to, we'll just look at just the psi. And what I want to point out is that, you know, this looks a little bit like a transparent film, except it's kind of flattened and it's kind of like, you know, dampened. So what I'll do is I'll just say, hey, you know what, let's just take this thickness and just make this thickness go, set the minimum, to, whoops, set the minimum to zero. Let's just set this thickness down to zero. And now that thickness is zero, let's just hit generate, see what it would look like. So if there's no titanium at all and it's just an oxide film, um, then you would basically have this, you know, typical transparent looking, you know, these interference patterns. Uh, and now you may notice that the result that we actually have, or what the data actually looks like, is that the peaks. Are largely you know, lined up, but they are they're dampened, and so that's basically what happens: is the presence of the metal on top of the dielectric dampens the in, in intensity of the interference. So, as we start to roll this quantity up, we watch as our peaks get dampened, and then we're back at eight nanometers, and we go up to nine, and we can see. Our, our answer has got to be somewhere between 8 and 9. And what we were getting before is 8.5. So we'll just go back to 8.5 and hit generate. And there you go. So like fitting any, any map scan, I can just hit fit scan data and then uh, show, show map data and then look at the results. And I can look at my SiO2 thickness. And I can look at my titanium thickness. And you can see it's a pretty small range. Uh, the error is decently low. Um, now you, you may notice, okay, I am fitting the thickness of this thermal SiO2, and you might think, well, couldn't that throw that off? Uh, it can, which is exactly why I'm fitting it. Um, I do know that the that this, uh, if we look back at the SiO2, I do know that this is accurate because I've done this in kind of stages, and this is how I'd recommend you do this, which is you oxidize your wafer or you grow your dielectric, then you do a nice you know, map scan on it and look at the range of thicknesses that you get from it. It should be pretty uniform. And then you use that exact same wafer once you know that, you, you deposit a thin layer of, of metal on it. And this can serve you uh, a few purposes now. The first thing you can do is you can say, hey, I wanted to put down 10 nanometers, let's say, and I'm getting something like 8.5. So it shows me that there's a little bit of an inaccuracy. Um, 
in the crystal rate monitor in my evaporator. So then I can adjust that with this information. The other thing it allows me to do is I could use this for something like an etch test. I could mask one side of the wafer and I could etch it, you know, if it's going to etch relatively slow, I get a few nanometers etched and I can just look at it again and, and map it again. So these different layers that I'm dealing with, I'm only fitting the thickness. The other, the other values that, des that describe the, the optical properties that the material has, um, I've left those in place and I've left them alone. But I gathered these much like how you'd imagine. I just fit the Cauchy film and you know did a map scan. Um, and then I built a model for the uh, for the, for titanium by modeling a very thick film of titanium deposited it you know by, via the exact same parameters and, and conditions as I did in this situation, except this time I have a, a much thinner layer such that I can analyze the thickness. So this technique is one that you can use uh, with pretty good accuracy. Thanks.